In this video, we will be talking about donning and doffing PPE. PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. And this is the procedure which you guys will be doing every single day in your clinical setting. Plus, this is very important for your NCLEX. So in order to teach you donning, let's assume that our patient is on droplet contact precaution. And I hope everybody knows, what do we wear in droplet contact precaution? Gown gloves, mask, goggles. Good job. And also these equipments are worn in the hallway, doorway or anteroom. Once you don on and then you're ready to go inside the patient's room. Donning goes in steps. So the number one thing which you want to put on is your gown. So again, whether you're using disposable gown or the reusable gown, you make sure you put your hands and arms first into the sleeves. Once the sleeves are on, you want to tie the strings of the neck first and then followed by the strings around the waist. Once your gown is settled, then that you want to wear the next part of PPE which is your mask. In the droplet precaution, we wear the simple surgical mask and if it has the loops, it's super easy. You just need to put the loops over your ears and you're good to go. If your mask has strings, then what you need to do is you want to put the strings first at the top of your head and then the second set of the strings would go at the back of your neck. You also make sure that you're pressing around the nasal bridge so that you're putting your mask around nicely and you are also pulling it down and you're covering your chin. Once you're happy with your mask, then the next thing you wanna put on is the goggles. And after goggles, goggles are pretty simple to put on. So once the goggles are on, the last thing what you want to put is gloves. And here I'm gonna give you a very good NCLEX tip so that you can always remember how to don. So can you guys raise your hands with me for one minute? Good job. So now we have to start from bottom up. Gown, mask, goggles, and gloves. Good job. So now you guys will always remember it. And make sure when you put your gloves on, you can adjust your gloves. You can pull those gloves over your sleeves so that you're nicely covering the area before you enter your patient's room. And you're all set and ready, all you beautiful nurses, to go inside and perform the procedure. All right, so now you have done your procedure and you are ready to take your PPE off, which means doffing. So before we learn about doffing, there is something which is very important for you to learn is the clean and the contaminated parts of PPE. So let's just talk about the contaminated parts first. So the front of the gown is contaminated. All the gloves in the front, they are contaminated. Front of the mask is contaminated. Front of the goggles is also contaminated. Now let's just talk about the clean parts. So ear pieces and the ear loops of the goggles and the ear loops of the mask, ties at the back of the neck, ties at the back of the waist as well as the inside of the gown and gloves are considered clean while you're taking your PPE off. So there are variety of ways you can safely remove the PPE which means doffing. However, in this video we will be discussing the CDC approved method for the removal of PPE. All the PPE should be removed before exiting the patient's room except for your respirator or mask. Now, let's just start with the sequence. First of all, you will be removing your gloves. And the how you will be removing your gloves? Remember that outside of the gloves are contaminated. And then you will be using a gloved hand, grasp the palm area of the other gloved hand and peel off the first glove. Then hold the removed glove in gloved hand. Slide your finger of ungloved hand under remaining glove at rest and peel off second glove over the first glove. Discard gloves in a waste container. Important point to remember, 
If your hands get contaminated during removal, immediately wash your hands with alcohol-based sanitizer. Next PPE after gloves you will remove is goggles. Outside of the goggles or face shield are contaminated. So if your hands get contaminated again, make sure you wash your hands with alcohol-based sanitizer. Remove goggles from the back by lifting headband or ear pieces. If the item is reusable, place it in designated receptacle for reprocessing. Otherwise, you can discard that in the waste container. After goggles, you will be removing your gown. So front of the gown and sleeves are contaminated. Unfasten your gown ties, taking care that sleeves don't contact your body when reaching for the ties, because ties are clean. Pull gown away from the neck and shoulders, touching inside of the gown only. Turn the gown inside out, because again remember, inside of the gown is clean. Fold or roll it into a bundle and discard it in a waste container. Lastly, you will be removing your mask or respirator. Front of the mask or respirator is contaminated. Red alert, do not touch it, do not touch it. If your hands get contaminated during mask or respiratory removal, make sure that you are again using hand sanitizer. Grasp the bottom ties or elastic of the mask respirator, then the ones at the top and remove them without touching the front and discard it in a waste container. Once all your PPE is off, make sure you wash your hands with soap or water or use alcohol-based hand sanitizer immediately after removing your PPEs. That's how you do the doffing off. Hello nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about PPE. PPE is one of the most important NCLEX topics, not just in NCLEX, in RexP and CPNRE, this topic comes a lot. Now let's just review some important NCLEX style PPE questions. Let's just review question number one. Here it comes on the screen. The nurse is caring for a client who was admitted with fever, chills, knuckle rigidity, and a petechial rash. Start thinking in your mind what it is. Keep thinking. So which of the following infection control precautions should the nurse implement? Let's just choose the best one. All right, so here are the four options on your screen. I want you guys to pause and think what is the answer. Now let's just review option number A. Place the client in a private negative pressure room. What do you guys think about it? Option A is incorrect guys because the client is showing the sign and symptoms of meningitis and you guys know meningitis is a droplet infection prevention control. So in that one, we don't put the patient in a negative pressure room. Good job. All right guys, option number B, wear a gown and gloves when performing assessments. What do you guys think about it? I think that's unfortunately an incorrect option. Why? Because you guys know patient is presenting with sign and symptoms of meningitis and meningitis is droplet precaution. So in droplet precaution, which mask do we wear? Kichab, we wear surgical mask. So that's why the nurse will not just wear gown and gloves, she would wear gown, gloves, and the surgical mask. Let's just review option number three. Wear a protective gown, gloves, and mask when obtaining client's vital signs. What do you guys think about it? And that's correct. You guys are right. C is a correct option because the client is showing the symptoms of meningitis and it's a droplet one. And in droplet, you guys know the nurse has to wear gown, gloves, and the mask, surgical mask. All right, let's just review the last option. I know, you know, you guys already know by now it's incorrect, but let's just still review it. No infection precaution need to be implemented for this client. What do you guys think? You would be thinking Taran is laughing, but do you think is this something correct? No, that's absolutely incorrect because the client is showing the symptoms of meningitis and we have to implement droplet precautions. I hope you guys enjoyed learning this question. Now let's just move on to the next question. All right guys, here is the next question on your screen. The nurse is caring for a client on airborne precautions. What steps will the nurse follow to decrease the spread of microorganism to other clients and select all that applied. So this is a SATA question again, but again, it's a good practice. 
So let's just review all the options here on the screen. And I'm gonna give you again, I'm gonna tell you guys to pause it and review all the options and use true and false strategy. So option number one, wash hands prior to putting gloves on and before entering client's room. What do you guys think? Yes, that is correct. Washing hands prior to putting gloves on and before entering the client's room prevents the spread of microorganism. So this is a correct option. So put a check mark in your notes. Option number two, when donning gloves, extend the gloves over the rest of the gown. What do you guys think about it? And option B guys, this is a correct option because extending the gloves over the rest of the gown protects the hands and wrist from contamination. So that's a correct option, put a check mark again. All right, now let's just review option number C, remove personal protective equipment after leaving the client's room. What do you guys think about it? I hope you have watched it in the video. This is incorrect because PPE should be removed before leaving the client's room to prevent the contact with the spread of microorganisms. Let's just review option number D. Remove respirator after leaving the client's room. Hmm, think about it. Is this correct? Is this incorrect? What do you guys, what goes on in your mind? So option number D is correct. The respirator should be removed after leaving the client's room to prevent the inhalation of airborne microorganisms in that room. Let's just review the last option, which is E. Remove goggles by grasping the front of the goggles and left away from the face. So what do you guys think? Again, go back to the video, what you have learned in that skill. That is incorrect. Goggles should be removed with clean hands by grasping the, either the headband or the earpieces to prevent the transmission of the microorganisms. I hope you enjoyed learning this SATA question. So what do you guys think? What's the final answer you have to mark in your exams? So the correct option is A, B, and D. Good job, everyone. Now let's just move on to the final question of PPE. All right, guys, so let's just review the final question from the PPE, and I'm gonna give you guys a simple one this time, okay? So here is the question on the screen. What is the recommended technique for removing the gloves contaminated with blood or body fluids? Here are your options. I want you to pause your screen again, take a minute and review these options and see which one is the correct option. All right, guys, so let's just review statement number A. Grasp the inside of one glove with the opposite hand and peel it off. What do you guys think about it? That is incorrect because grabbing the inside of the glove spreads any organisms to the skin, which you don't want. Let's just review option number two. Grasp the outside of one glove with the opposite hand and peel it off. Did you guys learn that in the video? Yes, that's correct. Because grasping the outside of the gloves with the opposite glove ensures no microorganisms are introduced to the skin during the glove removal. Let's just review option number C. Simultaneously remove both gloves by grasping the outside of one glove and pulling. You guys know that's totally incorrect because gloves should be removed one at a time in a controlled manner. Let's just review the option number D. Simultaneously remove both gloves by grasping the inside of one glove and pulling. And again, do you guys know that? Is this the correct technique? No, it's not. So that is also an incorrect option. So your answer is answer number two, which is option number B. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as NCLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FPNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.